subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, please drop a like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps a small channel grow. Uh, so today I'm gonna show you pretty much just the basics of laying fiberglass over plywood or a composite material. This isn't a video that you wanna miss, especially later on in the video. So as you can tell, I have pretty much just a spare piece of wood laying around. And I'm pretty much just making this video because there's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube um, for any kind of instructions or DIY for how to do this. And you also want to take into consideration, um, you do not want to use treated wood. Say you're doing a repair on a houseboat or any kind of boat. It don't have to be a boat. This video is pretty widespread for different varieties of what you could be using this application for. You don't want to use pressure treated wood because when everything settles in and the polyester resins, they start to come to a full cure, they will pretty much retract from the other chemicals that are in the pressure treated wood and it'll probably most likely separate or delaminate within probably a week of doing it. So I can go ahead and save you thousands of dollars now by you watching this video and just don't use pressure treated wood. And there's a few other mistakes you want to avoid later in this video. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this wood and then fiberglass over it. And then there will be a section where it is up to you if you are painting it after application or if you're going to gel coat it or non-skid the surface once it's done. So the next step here is you're going to want to take, I like to personally use 60 grit sandpaper. You can use 40. Um, the 40 and 60 is probably going to be your best bet when you're, when you're sanding the surface before you apply the polyester resin or whatever resin of your choice and then the fiberglass cloth or chop strand mat application. One thing I mentioned before we get this video started is you're gonna want a good respirator. I prefer a full face. I found a lot of times when you have like the big goggles and just the respirator on your face is that it, it this stuff still goes everywhere, fiberglass goes everywhere. Um, but really just when you're sanding any surface, you wanna use a, a good mask and these are pretty much like the 3M brand, but it's Chinese, I guess, I don't know, but it's worked very well. I've got probably three or four of them, uh, and they're really cheap too. I think this one was like $65, which I'll also leave a link in the description of where I got it. I ended up going with my three inch orbital sander. This is 3M's. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera closer so that you guys can see um, a lot more up close and other than that just I hope you enjoy the video and learn something All right, so now I've got the surface sanded. As you can tell, I did go back to my six inch just to speed up the process. Um, and then you wanna blow out any kind of contaminants and dust. And I always like to wipe it with a little bit of a solvent. Uh, it can be lacquer thinner, acetone, it doesn't really matter, as long as it's wiped down. Um, so this right here is an ounce and a half chop strand mat. And this is what we're gonna be using on the application. Um, so you want to go ahead and take a measurement of whatever you're putting it on and you probably want to at least have three sheets cut just to be safe 
depends on what you're making or repairing. But for this video, it's not going to be on a very important project. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes only. So next we're gonna go over here to the mixing station and mix up some polyester resin. So I've got some leftover polyester resin. That's gonna be perfect for this application. If I can get it open, it's been on the shelf for probably eight months. Sometimes we don't seal it good. It will like dry up and make it nearly impossible to open. So keep that in mind. All right, so about 900 attempts later, I finally got it open. And for this application, if, you, if you're curious about how much to mix, so it, you just kind of really gotta go by eye, but if it's like a small project like this, I would say six to eight ounces of resin. And this is a 3M cup, so I'm having to read it backwards. All right, so we're right on six ounces. So when you're trying to catalyze, yes, I did rip this thing from getting that thing off. Uh, so anyways, when you're trying to catalyze polyester or vinyl ester resin, it's always going to be depending on your temperature. So right now it's about 68 degrees inside my shop. So I can catalyze it pretty comfortable at 1.8%. Uh, during the colder months, you can catalyze up to 2% of polyester resin. The only tricky thing is that if you add too much or too less, it won't, it won't kick off. It can make it explode. As you can tell, it's like a purple color right now. Here's a pretty handy website. Um, you just do drops to CC converter and then pretty much whatever ounce you have. So right now I'm doing 15 drops to an ounce. So that's what the catalyst chart calls for. So you'll just do 15 times six, six is being the ounces. And then that's gonna call for 90 drops. So that's right at five cc's. Um, I think this is for the 1.8% catalyst. So you're safe to do five cc's. There's a couple ways of measuring MEKP. There's actually a few ways. So if you've got one of these, these are handy. It shows you, let's see, let me turn it around. Yeah, so you got the cc's. Let me make the camera focus. There we go. So you got up to 35 cc's. Uh, this is a very good one. So you just squeeze it and then it'll uh, display on the top. My favorite ones I feel like are most accurate is just the these medicine cups. These are a lot harder to see though, but I believe that they are more accurate. If you need something more accurate than that, you can use this. So it says 10 milliliters, which is the same as uh, cubic centimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and add five cc's. This is MEKP. This one is the 925. Most common is the 925H. So you really kind of have to roll with this stuff. Um, make sure you have everything out that you need and your, your fiberglass already pre-cut because once you put it in here, you've probably got 10 minute pot life. And that's being generous. It also kind of depends on the humidity and you're gonna to wanna to mix this stuff up as best as possible. When you put your catalyst in there, try not to pour it on top of your stick because these sticks will try to absorb your catalyst. And as you can tell, it's starting to kinda of change to a, a brown purple. And when you see that, that's going to be your indication that you have a good, a good catalyst a good catalyzation rate. So steer for 30 seconds to a minute. You'll get this real off color. And then we'll head up, we'll head back over to the fiberglass. So what I've got here is a 3 8 nap roller. This one, it doesn't really matter which ones you use for this application. Um, I will say that the, the foam but the completely foam ones do not do that great for these applications. And then the most important thing you're gonna need is a, a bubble roller. 
I don't know the correct term for, for this other than a bubble buster, bubble roller. Um, and this is going to be the most important step during this process. So make sure you don't skip past it. So I'm going to put a pretty decent coat on here. You don't have to put just an entirely amount of a lot. So you don't have to put it like super thick, but you don't want it to be too thin either because if it's going on a composite or wood, wood is going to soak it up. And I am applying a little bit of pressure here. And another little tip is when you're sanding this wood, what I did is I took out these, these edges. So when you're applying fiberglass over the wood, it tends to have issues going over a 90 degree angle which I will show you guys how to do that in another video that will be coming up probably next month, if not sooner. We'll just see how, how this video goes first. So I've got it, I've got it wet out and that's how you want it to look. It's going to be pretty thick, but it's not very light. And as you can tell, my resin's starting to turn purple. So I've got approximately eight minutes of uh, pot life left. This part could go wrong several different ways. And I might even be a little short on the resin, I'm not sure. I like to start in smaller spots because at times when, when you're trying to get this going, if it's like a larger project, you want to make it to where the wood or the composite you're applying it to is going to be transparent and it's okay if little little mess ups like that happen right now all right so we're all right so we're back so you, this is what you don't want you don't want it to be kind of spotty white areas in certain spots um so that's that's going to be a big no and you don't have to completely saturate it either. You just want it to, to be nice and transparent as if, as if you took water to it and just soaked it. Because what you're creating here is a bond between the surface that's applied and the top side of that fiberglass. You don't have to add a whole bunch of pressure. What this does is get any air bubbles out. Now sometimes you'll still have a few here and there that could possibly pop up during the cure. Uh, but I, I try to get them all out. I mean, you want it to be 100% transparent for the best product. I'm just cross hatching. I like to cross hatch pretty much all the time. And I'm I'm adding probably just medium pressure on this as well. And I can put a link in the description with pretty much everything I'm using today. Uh, these rollers, they come in very, very handy. And they got different sizes and all. This is definitely a step that you do not want to skip. Now the next step that I'm going to be doing is going to be a little trick for you guys and it will save you a lot of time and a lot of hassle applying gel coat directly over top of this and when to do it. When is okay to apply gel coat directly over fiberglass without having to sand the fiberglass. And I like to take these rollers and I just squirt them down with a solvent and then I dip them into a cup of solvent. I try to preserve these things as much as possible because they're, they're not really cheap and it's not worth buying the plastic ones. 
All right, so we're back over here. I had just poured in some gel coat, and this gel coat is just something I had laying around on the shelf. Um, what I normally do is when I'm tinting gel coat for different repairs, um, like this one right here, and it doesn't match or something, I just start all over. I, I try to keep different colors and different gallons that are just left over for di different projects like this, so it doesn't actually cost me. So I've got, I've got 12 ounces here of gel coat. So we've got about seven right here. I'm gonna pour that in there. In colder climates, you can go two and a half percent MEKP. I wouldn't suggest it if you had just tinted it and you need it to match, but if it's just for a product like this, then you can go two and a half percent and be okay. But for this one, I'm not adding any wax to it. So at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys a little other tip and apply non-skid to it. But for this, this is going to be gel coat with MEKP hardener only, no wax. So the warmest you want to get this is probably no hotter than I would say 112 degrees. So I'm gonna let this sit here for about, about 10 to 15 minutes and then do a third final coat of gel coat. I'm kind of, I'm going to kind of babysit the gel coat that's left in the pot. And once it starts to kind of gel up a little bit, that'll be the final coat. I'm gonna show you guys how to apply non-skid and then I'll, I'll switch it up to where it's going to be like gray non-skid and that way it's just not all white gel coat. And you'll be able to see on camera a lot better with a gray non-skid. So you can kind of see how, how that goes on and then how to apply it and choose your, your texture you want. So that was the final layer. And while that is starting to cure, not 100% because remember there's no, there's no wax in it. So for this, we're gonna make a gray, just some kind of off color. So you guys can see the texture a lot better than just being white. It'll be harder to see on camera. And I've got some leftover black from Lily Ram. They have very good gel coat, by the way. should create a medium to a dark gray. So for your final coat of any gel coat you add, you always gotta have a wax additive, whether it is Patch Aid or Duratec um, or PVA. PVA, you don't mix in here. It's actually applied after the gel coat's cured or after the gel coat tacks up and remains tacky. That's when you, you can brush, roll, or spray PVA over it, uh, like three or four coats, thin coats, that is. All right, so I've got this white and this black mixed together now. Now I'm gonna get this. This is non-skid from Fiberglass Florida, 
and I haven't even opened it yet, so let me open it real quick. So this stuff is very, very thin. So try not to breathe it in if you do make a mess. So we'll start with approximately four ounces. Now you're probably wondering, how do I catalyze this? Do I catalyze it by six ounces? Or do I catalyze it by how many ounces of non-skid that I had? Well, I'm about to tell you. So you can always do a test on your stick. So just mix it up very well. And kind of let this run to the bottom. So you see, we're still not quite there. So we're going to add more. I mean, that's not even considered a light non-skid. And it's gonna look it's gonna look pretty chunky when you mix it up. And it's going to get thicker. So your gel coat, the viscosity is gonna be very thin compared to what this is going to be. And I have found at times it, it's easier to catalyze and then throw in non-skid. Because once you add non-skid, the catalyst doesn't like to kick off as well. So this is a much better view of your non-skid on the stick. Scrape off some gel coat. So this right here would probably be considered a light non-skid. I'm going to pour some more there just so we can get it to at least a medium. So if you have six ounces of a gel coat and you want to achieve a medium to a aggressive non-skid then you'll want to you'll want to add like at least four to six, four to six ounces worth of non-skid so like one to one and there are so many ways to do this it's not even funny you can actually make non-skid with just gel coat and a cheap 3 8 nap roller but you gotta, it, it, it's a different texture, that, that's one thing. And this is a very fine non-skid. I think I ordered this originally for spraying. And if you ever have to, if you're spraying it, you can use a, a 2.0 tip and then throw a little MEK substitute in here to reduce it, to be able to spray it. Other than that, you would just have to shoot it at like probably 60 PSI. So I'm pretty happy with, with that right there. I think we're gonna roll this. So you, you still wanna catalyze by your, your total volume. So I've got 10 ounces here. And then for the patch aid, yeah, so for your, your patch aid, you want to add a little bit in there just to help secure. Um, I like to add like 10% to the cup and then PVA after that. But that's just me personally. But we'll go ahead and do 30% on here. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. So 30% would be roughly, roughly an ounce and a half. So this is roughly 11, 11 ounces total volume. So we're going to do seven and a, seven and a half cc's. That might be a little bit much. So I ended up, I found another roller, a little bit larger. 
So this Joko is actually starting to kick now. So I'm just going in a cross pattern. Then I'll let this product sit out to cure. It'll probably take a couple hours for a full, full cure. All right, so here's the final product. This is a smaller non-skid. There's a few different sizes you can you can purchase. Now this one's a little lumpy because of the the board underneath. It wasn't the best board to use. So I hope you learned something from this video. This is pretty straightforward. And if you guys have any questions, just leave it in the comments. And I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my channel. Feel free to comment on this video. Make suggestions on videos that you would like to see. I'm willing to hear and see what all you guys are wanting to learn.